Hello and welcome to part four of the series. This video covers gluing and trimming the fur as well as finishing the head. To start things off, I wanted to show you some of the stitching, specifically the markings that were hand sewn that I didn't show you last time. For this part, you should have a lined foam base with eyes already installed and fur sewn ready to attach. If you're not at this stage, it may be more useful to go back and check out the previous instalments. First, I like to lay the fur across the whole of the face and pull it to where I want it to sit to make sure all the pieces are correctly sewn and stretched how they need to be. If you're gluing the edges rather than sewing them, it's a good idea to turn them over now and use a small amount of glue to keep them folded. More on this later. Leave the front seam beneath the nose unsewn so that you can lift the sides of the muzzle and glue along the top. I like to start gluing at either the nose or the bridge of the muzzle depending on the head. Slowly work your way along the muzzle working back from the nose. Being extra careful around features such as the nose and eyes, it might be a good idea to cover these with tape. Try to use the glue as thinly as possible to avoid lumps under the fur and work in small sections so the glue does not cool before you lay the fabric. The reason you want to have the fabric laid across the rest of the face is so that it doesn't get bunched up or overstretch. This is how you'll get the best fit. To help the fabric follow the base as closely as possible and spread the glue, I suggest a slicker brush. When laying the fabric, brush the area you have just glued. There is no set order to glue it down in, do whatever areas feel natural to progress to. Seems like around the nose, mouth and ears, I have started to mainly hand sew. Not seen in this build, as I feel it gives a better fit, finish and adds a little bit of strength. If you have the skill or patience, I highly recommend sewing, especially those very visible seams. You'll find even though the head is still a ball of fluff, you'll begin to get more definition as the fur is attached. With these floppy ears, they were only glued onto the foam and the rest of the fabric was allowed to hang with small weights in the tips of the ears. At this stage, even though all the fur is not down at the back, I felt like I wanted to begin rough trimming. And before you ask, I use Andis Clippers model in description with separate 5FC, 7FC and 10 length blades. The rough trim is what I call shortening the fur to a length a bit longer than what I want, so that I can go back later and carefully do the final passes. Now you can see the face is fully glued and the trimming is still pretty rough though you can really start to get a feel for what the finished head will look like. Trimming I like to take very slow, removing a little bit more each time. Make sure you practice before going onto a head and try to always follow the fur direction. On the muzzle and around the eyes I like to go very short partly as it allows for clearer vision and it looks best in those areas too. It took me a while to be confident to go as short as I do and a lot of patience to get a nice finish. Every minute or so I like to get the fur into the bin so it doesn't create a huge mess and I highly recommend having a vacuum cleaner nearby. Please be aware that breathing the fur in the air is not healthy and should be avoided. To finish trimming, I like to go around some areas with small scissors to neaten up the edges. Here I'm making a simple tongue. Measure the length and width of the mouth, then draw a rectangle with one end rounded. Cut two of these from your fabric, I used fleece here. I hand sewed it using a blanket stitch and then added a little bit of stuff in, sewed up the end and did a loose running stitch down the middle to give it some shape. This can be glued or sewn into the head. Next I do some dry brushing. Other than a little practice on an old head, this was my first time doing it, 
I'm still new to it so cannot give much advice other than to think of it as shading and use it to make things pop. Not sure about how it looked on the ears when finished. Be careful about trying to add highlights this way and be sure to do this in daylight so you can get the right colours and brush out the fur to stop it clumping. I often blend things a little with my finger and I found that on the tongue it added a lot and the darker colours looked good around the eyes, nose and mouth. At this point, the head is almost done. What's left is mainly hand stitching as all the aesthetic work is done. We are going to readjust the back of the head as it was a little loose for the wearer. Cut a slim triangle shape from the back, then fix the edges together with hot glue. I use scraps of felt just to reinforce the join. Since the ears looked a little flat, I added some stuff in to the back of the ear before carefully gluing the edges down. Now, what's a little odd for me about finishing the series is this head was completed a few months ago, and I've since worked on about three other heads, completing two of those. So the method you see of gluing the edges behind the ears and cheek fur is not something I really do now. What I do instead, I believe, is called a slip stitch, where I'll try and sew as much of these back joins as possible using hand sewing. Both gluing and sewing work. If you're not very confident with sewing, I suggest gluing. I sew as it gives a stronger, slightly neater finish. Then I blanket stitch the sides of the neck, pinning the rest of the neck fabric out of my way to make it easier. Now the neck is done. The last step is to finish that inner line into the neck. Take a lot of time to pin it to get it as flat as possible. I suggest pinning the whole neck first and then hand sewing. So here we are. We're at the end of the video and the end of this series. This boy was a partal called Satin finished in February 2019. I'm still very much proud of this one, so really happy to finally be able to share the conclusion to this series and treat you to a little unseen video. Currently, I plan to release an update about new videos, but for now I'd like to thank Patreons Chloe Sasha Duff and Sewn Grunt for bringing this video to life. If you could do the YouTube things or check out another video, it really helps. Also I'll do links in descriptions. I post a lot on Instagram and lastly, good luck with all your projects.